Hi, I'm Tris Warkenton. And I'm Robert Crow, and we're going to be talking about production ML, TFX, and what's new. We're really excited to share what we've built in TFX, as well as some of what you, the community, have created. But first, a little background for those of you who might not be familiar with TFX. To begin with, as data scientists or machine learning engineers, we tend to focus on our models. That's natural, because that's where the magic happens. But when we move to production ML, we discover that there's a lot more that's required to be successful. At Google, we've measured the ML model code to be something like 5% of the total code necessary to train and deploy a model in production. But all of the other tools and infrastructure that you see here are critical to success. To put any piece of software into production, to use it in a product or service, we need a production infrastructure and process. First, we need all the things that any ML development needs, along with some special considerations because we're working in a production environment. But we also need all the things that any production software deployment needs. In other words, in addition to ML best practices, we also need to apply DevOps principles and practices to machine learning. We put tons of ML into production at Google, and we needed a strong framework, so we created TFX. You've probably been using it, or rather using products and services that are implemented using TFX. It's used not only at Google, but across all of the Alphabet companies. And since it's open source, it's available for you to use too. This is what I call the hello world of TFX, which is the pipeline that you start with when you just do a pip install. The components on top are a pipeline for training, and the ones on the bottom are a pipeline for running batch inference. On the right side are some deployment targets like TensorFlow Hub, JS, and TensorFlow Lite. Those are for use in a web browser, mobile application, or IoT device. You can also use TensorFlow Serving if you're going to serve your model for online or batch predictions, or Vertex Prediction if you need a cloud-based managed service. One of the key aspects of TFX is portability. We say that TFX runs just about anywhere, and here's what we mean by that. You can run it in different execution environments, including just running an entire pipeline in a web browser using Colab, or on your notebook, or in a Kubernetes cluster, or in Vertex AI. You can orchestrate it with a wide variety of orchestration engines, or just plain Python, including Airflow and Kubeflow. And you can perform all of the processing on one machine, like your laptop or a server. Or you can leverage the compute resources of a cluster by using Spark, Flink, or Dataflow. This kind of portability is incredibly powerful because it means that you're not locked into one way of running your pipelines, and you can easily move pipelines to different sets of infrastructure, scaling up from a web browser to a huge cluster with almost no code changes. OK, so that's TFX. But what's new? Well, we've only got 10 minutes. So let's look at a few highlights. First, there's new stuff in the core TFX SDK, starting with conditional control flow. You can now test and branch or run optional components based on the current state of pipeline artifacts. So a good example here is that if you're training a model and the accuracy falls below a certain threshold, you can optionally run an alerting component so that your team is aware of the situation. Another great addition to TFX that a lot of people have been asking for is the new exit handler. This allows you to detect and act on success or failure of your pipeline and components and run custom code based on the status. At the time of this recording, this is scheduled to be available in November 2021, so it might already be there depending on when you're watching this. But remember, TFX is an open source project, so you can contribute too. One of the best ways to get started is to join our special interest group, SIG TFX Add-ons, which brings together community contributors to create new components, tools, libraries, examples, and visualizations to make TFX even better. Let's take a look now at some of the work that the TFX Add-ons team is doing. A great example is the Firebase Publisher project, which is a TFX component to publish or update models 
usually TF Lite models, from TFX to Firebase ML. So you can train TF Lite models for mobile apps with TFX and publish them to Firebase where you can dynamically serve the latest version of the model and update without pushing a new version of your app to users. Another great example is the load testing project. By adding a load test component to your pipelines, you can run load tests as part of training pipelines before you deploy to production. That allows you to measure serving latency under load to make sure requirements are met before it affects your users. That helps avoid issues early, before they become fire drills. You can also use it during development to measure speed improvements in your models. Yet another great example that really shows the flexibility of TFX is the XGBoost Evaluator project. XGBoost is a very popular framework for building gradient-boosted trees, and this project creates a component to add support for evaluating XGBoost models, which you can train in TFX. One of the things that customers tell us is they need to be able to train models in more than one framework, and this project extends the standard TFX evaluator component, which helps expand XGBoost support in TFX. Another exciting TFX add-ons project is the Feast example gen component. This project is creating a TFX add-on component which allows TFX pipelines to ingest Feast datasets. Feast is the leading open source feature store for machine learning, and it offers low latency online data for real-time prediction and offline data for batch processing, along with the other advantages of using a feature store for your data. We'd like to give a big shout out to all of the project leaders in the TFX add-ons team, and especially to the leaders of the four projects that we've just mentioned. AI and machine learning only advances through the open collaboration of researchers and practitioners worldwide, and community teams continue to be incredibly important to success. Thanks. And don't forget, you can help too by joining TFX add-ons. But if you're just getting started in building ML for production applications, you can also sign up for a four-course specialization that we're creating with Deep Learning AI and Coursera, working with Andrew Ng, who is teaching the first course in the series. It covers TFX and a whole lot more to help you come up to speed on the state of the art of production ML. For more information, don't forget to visit our website where we have tons of tutorials, examples, and docs. And check out these other resources for even more. That's our talk. Thanks for listening.